so uh, today um, we're going to be talking about firm supply decisions. And there's basically two parts to that. So the first is um, how a price taking firm decides whether how much to produce uh, and the role of marginal their marginal costs in that decision. Um, and uh, especially what happens when the firm's marginal cost curve is not monotonically increasing. Um, and then how we can uh, graphically and mathematically measure consumer uh, producer surplus. Second, um, we'll talk about how the firm's production decision depends on the duration of time uh, over which it expects to be producing. And we'll emphasize the distinction between durable and storable or exhaustible commodities. Um, and how those uh, work through uh, Le Chatelier's principle to determine um, the conditions of supply over different runs. And we'll focus mostly on the case of durable commodities, of durable inputs, uh, drawing the relationship among different short run and long, medium run and long run uh, marginal and average cost curves. Uh, we'll then talk about different types of demand shocks, different types of change in demand conditions and how firms respond to these, uh, as well as the time path of production. Um, and how all of these ideas coming out of durability reverse and go in the exact opposite direction when uh, the inputs are storable. So the goal of the second part of the lecture is going to be to get a pretty rich sense of how firms' production changes over time without having to use an explicit dynamic model, which would be very common. Okay. So for the, fir for the next two weeks, we're basically going to be assuming that firms are price takers. And um, what that means is that the firm is only going to be able to change its output over a relatively small range where it doesn't affect prices, the prices in the market significantly by changing its output. Um, and you know, the way that the book portrays this, which I think is quite reasonable, is that basically unless the firm produces a huge amount, it's not big enough to significantly change the prices. So that they perceive a demand curve that's basically flat over the range uh, in which they're determining their prices. And we'll give uh, foundations for this idea in lecture 16, but for now we're just going to take it for granted. So the firm's going to maximize its profits, which are the product of price and quantity, minus its total cost. And uh, Christine, uh, what's the first order condition for a profit maximizing price taking firm? Well, just here, here's the expression. What happens if you take a derivative with this and assume that the price doesn't change when the quantity changes? Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah, and what's the derivative of the TC? Exactly. That's exactly right. So the first order condition for a for a price taking firm is that price is equal to marginal cost. And another way of saying that is we can invert this relationship and then say that the quantity that the firm supplies is the supply function of the price, where the supply function is the inverse of the marginal cost. Now, that works if the marginal cost is monotonically increasing. Because you can't invert something that's not monotonically increasing, right? So, <coughs> the, in general, we can say that the marginal cost curve is exactly the supply curve, or, or its inverse is exactly the supply curve. But if marginal cost is not monotonically increasing, we have a problem. That can happen either because marginal cost cuts across the price from above to below the price, or because there are multiple intersections between marginal cost and price. Um, and so I now want to consider a uh, relatively simple <coughs> example uh, of how that can happen. So is Kedar here? Kedar Sherol? No? Okay. 
Uh, I guess I'll just draw this. Um, so, one possibility which I tried rather pathetically to draw on your um, slides is that the marginal cost curve, so if this is price, uh, marginal cost might start above price and just come straight down below, right? A second problem that might arise Again, if this is price, then the marginal cost curve might sort of go above, go above price, then come back down below, and then come back above, right? So both of those would violate the conditions that we need to just say that the marginal cost curve is the uh, supply curve. Um, so. Uh, the typical way we try to solve this problem is what's called irony. Um, and this is a relatively simple procedure that lets us take a non-monotone uh, marginal cost curve and turn it into a monotone <coughs> marginal cost curve. Now this is only going to work uh, in the second case that I showed you where basically the marginal cost is increasing, but then there's some parts where it decreases for a while. It's not going to work in the case when it's decreasing over its full range. But let's imagine that you know it increases for a while, then decreases, and so forth. So here's price. And here we've got, actually, let's get rid of the price. Let's just have the marginal cost curve. So here's the marginal cost curve. So it increases, then it decreases, then it increases again. Right. Um, so, what um, price do, what quantity do we think the firm would supply if the price was like that? Well, note that if the firm choose, could choose this point, could choose this point, or could choose this point, right? Now, this point is where the marginal cost cuts the price from above, so that's a local minimum. So it's never going to choose that point, right? Now, is this point or that point better? Well, this point, if it produces at this point, it saves that much cost and it gains this much profit, right? So the, the losses that it makes as a result of producing more are greater than the gains that it gets as, produce, as a result of producing more. But it's not going to want to produce at that point. It'll, it'll choose to produce here. A second possibility is that the line is up here. In this case, the amount of losses it gets from producing here rather than here are this area, which is smaller than this area down here. Right? And so in that case, oh, sorry, I, I give the wrong point on this one. It wanted to produce here in this case. <coughs> and then it's going to want to produce here in that this case. Right? Because the gains outweigh the cost. Right? So what's the more general principle that's going on here? Well, whenever the area above the price curve and below the marginal cost curve is greater than the area in the opposite direction, it's going to want to produce to the left. Whenever the area below the price curve and above marginal cost is greater than the vice versa, it's going to want to produce to the right. So what we can do is the following. We can start with a line that's drawn at the point at the point where marginal cost just starts to turn down. Right? We can start with a line there. <coughs> and we can gradually lower it until the area between the line and the marginal cost curve on both uh, directions 
is uh, the same area, right? Once we get that, what we can do is say, let's just forget about the area of the marginal cost curve that's above that, and let's just forget about the area that's below it, and let's Yeah. So let's just forget about these areas here entirely, and let's construct a new marginal cost curve called the iron marginal cost curve, which is just like that. Right? So it's just, you, it goes increasing to there, it's then flat here, and then it increases again. Now, this is going to, this marginal cost curve is monotone increasing, so it's like, it's nice and we don't have to worry about the problem of not being able to define the uh, supply function. And it has the, um, and it's exact, it leads to exactly the same behavior that the firm has with the original marginal cost curve. Because we know that if the price is above this level, then they're always going to produce to the right. If it's below this level, they'll always produce to the left. So anytime you have a non-monotone marginal cost curve, you can always create a mon monotone marginal cost curve using this ironing procedure. And that's true even if um, there are multiple, if the curve goes up and down multiple times. <coughs> so the curve could even be like, like that. What you would do is just every time it turned down, you would iron it like that like that, like that, and like that, and you'd have this curve that's sort of wavy in parts and then has these flat parts as well. And that gives you uh, a monotone increasing marginal cost curve. Yes? Can you determine the slope of the line past the iron on the side? Uh, how do you determine the slope? Because that just comes off the marginal cost curve. So it's just whatever the tangent line is at, at the point that the iron intersects Um. So, uh, the, it's not the tangent, the ironing line is always flat. Right, and then I meant tangent to the original. Oh yeah, yeah, so there's a yeah. kink. There's a kink at the edge of the iron every time. Right. And it's just, and the, it just picks up being the marginal cost curve again. That, that's basically what happens. So, you see, here's the, here's the original marginal cost curve. At this point, it just becomes the marginal cost curve again. So it's just whatever, the slope locally is just whatever the marginal cost curve okay, is. So it should be curved. Or yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't make it linear. <coughs> now, this, an, an, another source of the problem uh, of non, of the firm's um, marginal cost curve not being its supply curve is that the firm might want to shut down. Right? So it might want to produce nothing at all. And we usually represent this by saying, well, it only has a supply <coughs> curve that's the point above the average cost curve. But actually, even this problem, we can deal with as well by ironing. Because we can always think of any firm with fixed costs as just having an incredibly high marginal cost for its first few units, which account for all that fixed cost. And then its marginal cost just plummeting after that point. right? and then maybe coming back up again. And so again, we could take this and we could say, oh, we need to start ironing there until the marginal cost curve is actually increasing again and these areas are equated. So even for dealing with that problem, we can again use the ironing technique. And in fact, the idea that marginal cost only takes the point above average cost is exactly the same as the ironing technique because that's exactly the point at which the price balances all the costs that you've incurred to that point. Right. Okay. Um, so let me just um, go through this in a slightly more formulaic rather than just graphical way. Um, so what you do is you begin with a non-monotone marginal cost curve, and you construct what's <coughs> called the iron marginal cost curve, MC tilde, which has the property that it's monotone, 